Hey dragonflies, it's time for another story with Mr. Mattson. Today I'm reading Just Kidding, written by Trudy Ludwig and illustrated by Adam Gustavus. Just Kidding. There are times I don't like being a kid. Like now, here I am waiting to see which team will choose me for some pickup basketball, and the decision rests on a game called Rock, Paper, Scissors. We'll play two out of three, says Vince to Cody. Loser gets DJ. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors. That's what I felt like. A loser. Like I've got a big L stamped on my forehead. Rock, paper, scissors. Back at my old school, my friends would joke around with me, but they never made me feel like I was the joke. Rock, paper, scissors. Ha! You lose, Cody, says Vince. DJ's on your team. I look at the guys, and nobody says anything about Vince's dumb way of choosing which team I'm on. Suddenly, I don't feel very much like playing, so I start to head home. Hey, DJ, where are you going, calls Vince as I walk off the basketball court. Home, I shout. What's the matter, DJ? Can't you take a joke? I was just kidding. Some joke, I snap back and I break into a run. Ah! I race across the baseball field past a bunch of houses that lined my street and to my treehouse in our backyard. Jerks, I yell from my treehouse door. They're all jerks. And then I sit there thinking back on all those times that Vince made fun of me in front of other kids. When I first came to Roosevelt Elementary a month ago, Vince seemed friendly enough, but when I tried out for the soccer team he was on, things started to get a little weird between he and me. Hey Vince, I told him, Coach Dibbs said I'd make a great goalie for the team. Did you hear that, guys? Vince calls out. DJ's gonna be our new girly. And the kids laughed as Vince pranced around the soccer field with a goofy look on his face. I laughed along with them because Vince was funny, but it really bugged me that he made a joke instead of congratulating me. Yesterday morning, when I got on the school bus, I headed to my usual seat, way in the back, next to Vince, Brian, and the other guys. Right when I sat down, Vince asked me, are you wearing your pajama top to school? And before I could answer, he started poking me with his finger and chanting, DJ's wearing his PJs, DJ's wearing his PJs. That's not funny, Vince, I said. Poke, quit it, poke, knock it off, Vince, poke, cut it out. Everyone on the bus got really quiet. And the bus driver glared at Vince and me through his rear view mirror. Vince looked all innocent-like and said just loud enough for the driver to hear, Gee, I was just kidding. And then today, Vince comes up with this lame way of placing me on a team. I've had it. DJ, are you in the treehouse? Asked my dad from below. I'm too angry to answer, so I don't. DJ, are you okay? I don't want to talk about it. Well, why don't you just come play some catch instead? So I join my dad in the yard and he hands me my baseball glove. We toss the ball in silence. The rhythm of the ball going back and forth calms me down a bit. And after a while, my dad asks, are you ready to talk about it now? Yeah, I say. So I tell him how Vince teases me in ways that I don't think are funny. I try to ignore him so he'll stop, but he doesn't. And then I, but he doesn't. Then I end up losing it, looking like I'm the jerk because I can't take a joke. I just don't get it, Dad. Why does he pick me like this? DJ, you may never know exactly why kids like Vince are mean to you, but I do think it has to do more with him and what's going on than with you, my dad says. <clears throat> 
We toss the ball a little more and then my dad suggests that we play a game to help me figure out how to handle myself when kids like Vince pick on me. He calls over my big brother Nick to help. This game worked for Nick and I think it will work for you too, says my dad. Nick had this problem? No way! Yep, said Nick. The same kind of thing happened to me at school last year. There's only one rule in this game, says our dad. You can't say or do anything mean back to the teaser. Nick goes first to show me how the game is played and calls my dad four eyes. You're right, says dad. Wearing glasses is like having an extra set of eyes. Thanks for noticing. Good one, dad, laughs Nick. When it's my turn, I can't think of anything great to say, so I just act goofy, and that cracks us up. The next morning. The next morning, I got on the school bus and I sat down next to Brian. Vince moved into the seat right behind us. I know he's up to no good. Sure enough, he starts making his move, this time on Brian. Hey, bedhead, Vince says. Did you bother looking in the mirror this morning? Brian squirmed in his seat as some kids on the bus watched in silence. Cool do, I say to Brian. Then I mess up my hair even worse than Brian's and make a fish face to go with my new crazy hairdo. The kids around us burst out <laughs> laughing. Vince doesn't say another word the rest of the ride to school. Thanks, DJ, whispers Brian. No problem, I whisper back. I'd like to say that Vince stopped bugging me after that, but he didn't. I even caught him red-handed in class, sticking a wad of gum on my chair. When I told him to take it off, he just laughed and walked away. So my dad and I met with my teacher, Mrs. Winter, and asked for her advice. Mrs. Winter said she was glad we told her about this problem. <clears throat> Vince has somehow learned that it's okay to say and do hurtful things to people, she said. I'll have the school counselor work with Vince to teach him the skills he needs to be a better friend. In the meantime, she adds, hang out with kids who make you feel good about yourself. It's also important to let me know if Vince continues to pick on you. But, but I don't want to be a tattletale. Tattling is when you're trying to get someone in trouble, explained Mrs. Winter. Reporting is what you do when you're trying to help someone who's in trouble. And in this case, DJ, you're reporting because you're in trouble and you need help. So I followed Mrs. Winter's advice and Vince eventually stopped bugging me so much. Don't get me wrong, it's fun to kid around with your friends and family, but I learned the hard way that when a joke has a sharp edge to it, it can cut you to pieces. Now I hang out with Brian, Joe, and Miguel, and we horse around and have fun without making fun of each other. And that's just the way we like it.